Hi friends, today we will be discussing on the, on the influence of concentration on rate of reactants. As we had discussed in the last lecture, rate is proportional to concentration and for a general reaction like A giving B, the product B, we can write rate is, is equal to uh, rate constant K multiplied by concentration of A. Whenever we are saying that the rate about the rate, rate is not always a constant. As we know, rate should be specified with that particular temperature at which the experiment is conducted. That is, rate at a particular temperature can be given as rate is equal to and the rate constant uh, at that particular temperature multiplied by the concentration of A. So, here afterwards, our discussion will be on uh, two topics. One is about the influence of concentration on the rate and also temperature also affects the rate. So, another one is influence of temperature on rate. In today's discussion, we will be dealing with the influence of temp on the concept of the concentration on the rate of the reaction. Now, coming to a, the general reaction A giving B, at time T equal to 0, concentration is A moles per liter and at that particular time T equal to 0, concentration of B will be 0 moles per liter. Now, at time t equal to t, the concentration will be a minus x. We are meaning to say that x moles of a has been reacted to b. So, that means at time t equal to t, a concentration of a is a minus x and concentration of b will be x. Now, we know the differential rate of reaction if you write minus d by dt of a minus x. In all the kinetic equations, we have to specify the rate at that particular time. And at that particular time, the concentration of A is A minus X. So, this will be equal to concentration of K, rate constant K multiplied by A minus X. This upon simplification, as you know, A is a constant. So, this will be, uh, this part will be uh, 0 and the remaining will be plus dx by dt is equal to k into concentration of a minus x. This is just for a first order reaction. For a reaction of any order, here there will be a power. As we know, that will be the order of the reaction. So, plus dx by dt will be equal to k into a minus x to the power of some exponent and that exponent will be our order of the reaction. By integrating this rate expression, we can have the rate constant, integrated rate constants for different orders like 0, 1, 2 or up to nth order of reaction. That will be seen next. Now let us see the zero order reaction. Recording our general rate equation which can be given as dx by dt equals k into a minus x to the power of exponent. Now, for a zero order reaction, we can write this one as dx by dt equals k into a minus x to the power of zero, since it is a zero order reaction. So, this will be dx by dt is equal to k, or we can formulate it as dx is equal to k dt. And upon integration, integral dx will be equal to integral k dt. So that x will be equal to k t. It is a very simple uh, relation for a zero order reaction. We have got x is equal to k t. In any kinetics, the next topic should be about the half-life of the reaction. So we will try to derive an uh, equation for half-life. So, what will be the half-life of this particular reaction? Half-life is the time at which the initial concentration has been reduced to half of the initial concentration. That means, x would have changed to a by 2. So, our general rate equation is x equals kt. Now, instead of x, we have to substitute x should be equal to a by 2. That is, kt equals a by 2. Two. For more specific or more specifically, we have to write it as k and the time is half life k 
a half is equal to a by 2 or t half is equal to a by 2. Okay. This is also a very important relation in which we can see that t half is now proportional to concentration of a. Now let us see the graphical representation of the zero order reaction. In any kinetics, in any order of reaction, what we can measure is the remaining amount of concentration which is called as the A minus X. So instead of X, we have to uh, or we have to plot it as the A minus X. Now let us see the graphical representation of the zero order reaction. So for any uh, reaction, we have to keep in our mind that what you can uh, monitor or what you can measure is the remaining amount of the uh, initial reactant. So, remaining amount of the initial reactant means that should be, uh, that will be A minus X. Okay, we can write A minus X. So, for a, a graphical representation, we have to plot it as A minus X. So, our in the rate equation for zero order reaction is X is equal to KT or we can write KT equals X can be written as A minus A minus X. So we have to plot in terms of a minus x meaning to say minus a minus x is equal to kt minus a or a minus x equals minus kt plus a. As you as we can see that is equation is a straight line equation and if you are plotting it we can plot it as a simple graph always our since it is a kinetic experiment always our x-axis will be uh, on time and on y-axis we are going to plot as minus x it is having a negative slope so the equation will be from here and its slope will be equal to minus k and the y-intercept will be equal to k. So thus we can plot the uh, graph of zero order reactions. Let us see the, an example of zero order reaction. This is the decomposition of N2O uh, in presence of platinum and applying temperature. It will decompose into N2 gas plus half uh, oxygen. Both it is a gas phase reaction. And this is a zero order reaction, meaning to say that if you write the rate as rate should be equal to K into concentration of M2O to the power of zero. So what is the explanation for this? Actually, in zero, it is in the heterogeneous catalysis or in enzyme catalysis that we will, we will see a lot of examples of zero order reactions. What is happening is that M2O for the reaction to be done, it should get adsorbed on platinum surface that means if this is a platinum surface we are having a lot of active sites here and on all these active sites N2O can get adsorbed but what will happen once the active sites are over the, once the active sites are over N2O will be in the N2O will be in the gaseous phase we should remember that N2 in the gaseous phase will not take part in the reaction. Only the N2O which is which are adsorbed on the platinum surface will take part in the reaction. Meaning to say that if the platinum uh, active sites are less or the N2O concentration is very high, it will appear that it will, it will appear that there is no effect of changing the concentration of N2O, meaning to say the rate of or the change of concentration is not affecting the rate of the reaction. So, zero order reactions are very common in heterogeneous catalysis and also in enzyme. Now, let us see the first order reactions. Recalling our general rate equation as dx by dt equals k into concentration of a minus x to the power of as we told before some exponent since it is a first order reaction we can give as dx by dt equals k into a minus x to the power of 1 
since it is a first order reaction. Now let us do the integration. So we can separate the variables. We need to say that this will be integral of dx by a minus x will be equal to k dt on the integral. Now upon integration, you know, it is dx by a minus x. Integral of 1 by a, a minus x, it is a standard integral, which will be minus log of a minus x will be equal to kt plus an integration constant c. Our next task is to find the integration constant the c. So which can be given as a t equal to 0. At initial time, whenever t is equal to 0, nothing has been reacted. That means x will be equal to 0. So upon substitution, we will get this as minus log x is 0 minus log a is equal to c. So we have got the integration constant c as minus log a. Upon substitution in uh, this one, we will get minus log a minus x is equal to kt minus log a. Now, going to this side, this will be kt equals log a minus log a minus x or k equals 1 by t log of a by a minus x. So this is the great equation for the first order equation. Once you get the great equation, our next task is to see the half-life of the reaction. So let us see the half-life. As we discussed in the zero order reaction, half life is the time at which the initial concentration becomes half. That means instead of x, you have to put k by 2. So we have to substitute x is equal to k by 2. This is a general one. So k is equal to 1 by t log of a divided by a minus k by 2. This will be equal to 1 by t. So this is a minus a by 2 is a by 2. So this will be uh, a will be cancelled and 1 by t log 2. If we convert it into uh, log to the base of 10, we can write it as k is equal to 1 divided by 1 divided by t for specific reason. We are writing as t half is equal to log 2. And converting to uh, natural logarithm, so this will be equal to 1 multiplied by 0.693. Or in general, we can write t half is equal to 0.693 divided by k. Let us see the graph graphical representation of the first order reaction. For that, we can use uh, this equation. It is minus log a minus x equals kt minus log a. As uh, I had give, uh, given an indication before, we have to plot log a minus x. So this will be uh, log a minus x will be equal to minus kt plus log a. As we can see, this is a straight line equation. Its slope is equal to minus k and intercept is uh, log a. So can plot the equation like plot the graph like this. Here there will be time, and here on y-axis we will be plotting log a minus x. This is having a negative slope, so the graph will start from here, and your slope value is will be slope will be equal to minus k, and y-intercept will be log a. This is the graph of first order reaction. An important example of first order reaction is the radioactive disintegration. This has got tremendous application in our uh, daily life used for um, radiocarbon radioactive disintegration. If you take a particular example like a uh, metal like a cobalt uh, 60 which is having a half-life of uh, 5.26 
years. So, uh, as we had seen before, the half-life of uh, first order reaction is like T half is equal to 0.693 divided by K. Meaning to say that the half-life is independent of initial concentration, is independent of initial concentration A. So, as I stated, cobalt 60 is having a half-life of 5.26 years. What does that mean? So, if I take cobalt 60, if I take 100 milligram, I can take in another experiment, I can take at 100 grams. Maybe I will take another one as 100 kilograms. And after the same time, 5.26 years, 5.26 years, this 100 milligram would have converted to 50 milligram. This 100 grams would have converted to 50 grams and this 100 kilograms will be converted to 50 kilograms. That means it is independent of the initial concentration, but this is a T half is always a constant. In case of cobalt 60, that constant is nothing but 5.26 years. Now let us see the second order reactions. Second order reactions can be of two different types. Either it can be of this type giving 2A giving you products that is the same uh, molecule A, two molecules are reacting and giving you products or it can be of different type A giving products. Both of them will be giving a second order reaction so it is equal to K into concentration of A to the power of 2 or this will be right is equal to K into concentration of A multiplied by concentration of B. So this overall order will be 2 and this also overall order will be 2. And for this type of reactions, let us see how to get the integrated rate equation. As we have seen uh, before, let us go to our general uh, relation, which is dx by dt is equal to k into a minus x. Since it is a second order reaction, we can write a minus x to the power of 2. Now, upon simplification, a proper rearrangement dx by a minus x to the power of square is equal to k dt. We are going to integrate it, so integral dx. Okay. Now we have to integrate by a minus x square, so this can be integrated like a minus x to the power of minus 2 dx integral is equal to integral k dt. So, integral of a minus x square will be a minus x to the power of minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 and of minus x there will be a minus 1 here will be equal to k dt will be k t plus c. So, this upon simplification we can have it as 1 by a minus x is equal to kt plus c. Now our task is to determine the uh, integration constant c. Let us see how we can uh, determine. Any, uh, as always, at t equal to 0, x will be equal to 0. So we can uh, write it as 1 by a, x is equal to 0. So 1 by a will be equal to c. So we have got our integration constant c as 1 by a. So now we can substitute it. So it will be 1 by a minus x is equal to kt plus 1 by a or kt can be given as 1 by a minus x minus 1 by a or in simple first or second order rate equation k is equal to 1 by t 1 by a minus x minus 1 by a. This is our second order rate equation. Now let us see the again as usual we will go for the half life. Let us see the half life of this one. Half life. So what is that we have to do for half life instead of x we have to convert it into or instead of x we have to substitute a by 2. So let us substitute a by 2 here that means k is equal to 1 by t 
1 by a minus a by 2 minus 1 by a. So what will be this? This will be equal to, so for, uh, since it is t half, we can specify it as t 1 by 2 or t 1 by 2 equal 1 by k. 1 by a minus a by 2 will be equal to a by 2. So this will be 2 by a minus 1 by a, which can be given as 1 by k into 1 by a. Or specifically, we can write t half is equal to 1 by k or t half is proportional to 1 by a. Now let us see the graph of this particular uh, second order reaction. For that we can use this equation. Let us see the graph. So as we have told before, we have to plot in terms of 1 by a minus x. So what will be 1 by a minus x? 1 by a minus x will be equal to kt plus 1 by a. So this is again a straight line equation and if you are plotting here y axis will be sorry x axis will be t y axis will be 1 by a minus x this is a positive line so this will be like this and slope will be equal to k and your y intercept is nothing but 1 by a Let us move on to second order re reactions of the next type, which is A plus B giving you products. The speciality of this reaction is that both A and B are having different initial concentration. So normally we can write as the our general equation is dx by dt equal to k into a minus x to the power of some exponent. And in this particular reaction, at t equal to zero, concentration of A is small a mole liter minus 1 and b is b liter minus 1. Now at t equal to t, x modes of a would have been reacted if it is so, x modes of b also would have been reacted. That means dx by dt we can write as k into a minus x multiplied by k into b minus x. Now upon proper rearrangement we can write dx by a minus x into b minus x is equal to k into dt. By converting this, this particular fraction, 1 by a minus x into b minus x into partial fractions as we can write 1 by a minus b multiplied by 1 by b minus x minus 1 by a minus x. So let us substitute uh, this here. So this will be 1 by a minus b 1 by b minus x minus 1 by a minus x equals sorry dx equals k dt. Now we have to integrate this expression. So what will be the uh, integration? So this, here it is 1 by a minus b is a constant. We can take it outside and 1 by b minus x just like the first order rate equation it will be minus log of b minus x and this 1 by a minus x will be minus log of a minus x. So we can write 1 by a minus b is a constant, it is a common term. Now here it will be minus log b minus x minus or minus log a minus x will be equal to kt plus c. Now upon proper uh, rearrangement, we can write here as 1 by a minus b, this is plus log a minus x, log a minus x, minus log b minus x, here will be log b minus x, will be equal to kt plus c. As usual, we have to find the integration constant c, for to find the integration constant c, we have to put at t equal to 0, x is equal to 0. So, at t equal to 0, x equal to 0, this equation becomes 1 by a minus b multiplied by log of 
a by b will be equal to c. Now remaining part is just the substitution of this one to here. So what will be the expression? 1 by a minus b log of a minus x by b b minus x is equal to kt plus 1 by a minus b log a by b. Now upon proper uh, rearrangement you can take this side and we will keep kt on a single side. Let us see what will happen. So this will be 1 by a minus b log of a minus x by b minus x minus 1 by a minus b log a by b is equal to k. And for the simplification we give you a second order rate equation in which a and b are having different initial concentrations. Now finally let us see what about the nth order reaction. A reaction in which n molecules of A is giving uh, you the products. Let us recall the general rate equation which was we have given as dx by dt is equal to k into A minus x. Since n molecules are reacting the order is n. Now let us try to integrate and find an expression for the nth order reaction. So this will be dx by a minus x to the power of n is equal to k dt and this upon integration will be integral dx by dt you can write as a minus x to the power of minus n dx is equal to integral k dt. Now what about the integral of this one uh, will be a minus x to the power of minus n plus 1 divided by minus n plus 1 and of exponent of x there will be a minus 1 sign here will be equal to kt plus c. So what will be this one? My a minus x to of minus n plus 1. If I go to the denominator, this will be a minus x to the power of n minus 1. And this sign would have uh, will be gone, will be equal to kt plus uh, we have missed uh, uh, our uh, minus 1 here, so this will be uh, 1 by, it will be uh, actually n minus 1, 1 by n minus 1, 1 by a minus x to the power of n minus 1 is equal to kt plus c. As usual, we have to find the integration constant c. To get the integration constant c, we will be applying uh, as c equal to 0 x is equal to 0. So this will be 1 by n minus 1. Here 1 by a minus x this is 1 by a to the power of n minus 1 will be equal to c. Now we have got the integration constant. So uh, substituting in the original equation this will be 1 by n minus 1. 1 by a minus x to the power of n minus 1 is equal to kt plus 1 by n minus 1 1 by a to the power of n minus 1. Now upon uh, proper rearrangement taking to this side here it will be 1 by n minus 1 will be a common term here it will be 1 by a minus x 
to the power of n minus 1 minus 1 by k to the power of n minus 1 which will be equal to k so this is our rate, uh, rate equation for the nth order reaction now let us go to the half life of uh, this particular reaction here As usual, we have to find the half life. We have to put x is equal to a by 2. So, half life t 1 by 2 will be equal to 1 by k multiplied by n minus 1 of 1 by 1 minus a minus x to the power of n minus 1 minus 1 by e to the power of n minus 1. So here this will be 1 by k to the power of n minus 1. a minus a by 2 that will be a by 2. So this will be uh, phase to prove. So 1 by a by 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1 by a to the power of n minus 1 of t naught is equal to 1 by k n minus 1. So this will be 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1 and here there will be a, a to the power of n minus 1 so into 1 by a to the power of n minus 1 or meaning to say we can give as t half is proportional to 1 by a to the power of n minus 1 for any order of reaction. And the last one remaining is our uh, graph. If you plot the graph, you can plot it as in terms of 1 by a minus x. So here, x axis, y axis. So this is y axis. Here we will be plotting uh, t. Here we will be plotting 1 by a minus x to the power of n minus 1. And this will be having a positive slope, of course, it will be having a positive slope and your slope value will be k into n minus 1 and your 1 by the y intercept will be 1 by a to the power of n minus 1. This is for a graphical representation. You can substitute uh, n as 0, 1, 2, 3, etc and find the rate equations and also the t calculations for any order of reactions.